Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in his place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. And then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw an angel in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. The angel asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni! Which means teacher. I don't know about you, but I feel like we just came out of a tomb. This has been one heck of a year. Jesus would rather go into hell to get us out rather than go back to heaven without us. And this has been hell for quite a number of people. In this time of Lent, in this week of Holy Week, we paid attention to how Christ uh, came to be with us in our suffering and in the darkness and in the difficulty. But I'm seeing brothers and sisters here that have been uh, under quarantine or who have been in recovery and, and like groundhogs coming up out of the ground or Jesus coming from the tomb. It's, it's like new life. And for this, we give thanks and praise to God. Let's go in together in a time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your gracious love for us, that you came, the word made flesh, to live among us, to suffer with us, to teach us, to help us, to companion with us. And then when the time came to take the cross, to sacrifice your life in love, to show us the way of love and self-sacrifice, that strength through suffering and through vulnerability and through your transforming power. And then on this day of resurrection, Lord, you rise from the dead and you let us know that there is no power in heaven or earth or under the earth or in any space of time that can stop your love for us. Not even death itself can separate us from your great love. So we thank you and we praise you. We lift up our prayers for all of your people everywhere this day. Those who are worshiping with us here, those who will be worshiping us with us um, online. Our brothers and sisters around the globe today celebrate the power of your resurrection and your transforming love. We thank you and praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I remember Easter very differently when I was growing up. When I grew up, I was born in 1959, and my family, even though I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, my family was much, much more oriented to the, to the 50s and before. As far as my father knows, there has been no good music written after the big band era. Anything after Elvis was the devil's music. Easter Sunday would come and, you know, we always dressed up with our Sunday best and Easter Sunday was always the Easter Sunday best. 
And I remember, I see pictures. I've gone back recently and looked at some old family pictures. If we were someplace with a screen, I'd show you some of those. But I remember especially my, um, my tiny little sister, who was about three or four years old in the one picture, with her bonnet on and her white gloves and her little dress and my mom with her white gloves and, and everybody decked out. Me with my snazzy little clip-on bow tie with a white dress shirt that I had worn the previous Easter, except the previous Easter it was too large and this Easter it was too small. And I, th I swear it was Easter morning, we're, we're coming out and, um, and we're coming out of the door and the wind was blowing and Dad was fussing about something, I don't know, the dog was misbehaving or something and the, the door blew open and then blew back and hit him in the back and smashed and glass went everywhere. And I don't know about you, it's kind of like uh, the Christmas story. It's like, Ralphie, where did you learn that word? Every curse word I ever learned, I learned from my father. And he used every one of them that morning. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, we can't go to church now. You know, and I don't know if I said it out loud. It's like, well, well why not? Well, like lightning? <laughs> but in those days, it, it was everybody went to church. You know, you grew up in, in communities, uh, a lot of America was rural communities during those times, for those of you that grew up in America, and you grew up in towns, and you had your family, and your extended family, and you were, you were raised in the church, you, you, had its, you were in its nursery, you were baptized there, you were confirmed there, um, and in the end, you were married there, you were buried there. But then the world changed and the economy changed and we had the creation of what they called the nuclear family, husband, wife, children, and it was mobile and they were moving around to community to community. Um, and then what would happen is you would move into the community but everybody went to the church so one of the first things you had to do was to find a church. And the way you found the church was by you looking around and maybe if you're Methodist you were looking for Methodist or Presbyterian, Presbyterian or whatever, but you would find out what people believed you would find out what the church believed. So, you know, it was like, oh, okay, we have a common belief here. I believe what they believe, so we'll go there. And then after you get there, you learn how to behave, right? So, you know, no matter how bad the morning was when you came into church, you were this shiny, happy family that was just loving the Lord, and you had done everything right this week, and, you know, you're just walking in, hey, there you are. Hey, there you are. Dad, what about those curse words earlier? No. Hi, everybody. Good to see you Sunday morning. And everybody's doing fine because when you ask them how you're doing, they tell you, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing fine. We're all doing fine. Isn't the Lord wonderful? And so you learned how to behave. I mean, and it was very, very um, strict. I mean, I remember uh, uh, offerings were always taken by the ushers, who were always men, who were always in suits, and you can identify who they were by the carnation. And I remember the scandal that didn't have enough of men who had a suit or a sport coat on, and so they actually had to have somebody in a dress shirt. At least he had a tie on that could be an usher. They weren't quite sure where to put the carnation. And, uh, but he was in the back, so m most people wouldn't see him as we took the offering. So first you have your belief, and then you learn how to behave. You conform. This is the way that we behave. This is the way we're supposed to act. Which, of course, um, elicited all kinds of accusations of hypocrisy, especially in the 60s, because this is how you behaved on Sunday, because this is what everybody, what everybody was supposed to do, and then you... Um, acted maybe differently during the week. In the end, um, what would happen is you, you would join the church. You would belong. You would be, become a part of that community. You would become part of that church. Jesus did it differently. Jesus did it the complete reverse. You know, it, it, he focus, focused first on belonging. And then, after you belong, maybe you learn how to behave. And then together, maybe you figure out what you believe. And what really jumps out at me about this morning was that moment when Mary had no idea who this person was. She was distraught. She was distressed. She was trying to figure out the resurrection. Um, and, and if you're trying to figure out what this resurrection is. I have to tell you, I, I'm not sure I understand what it means either, except for the palm trees are blown down behind me. Um, that's okay, Jesus is out, we don't need to. But 
When Jesus said her name, she recognized who Jesus was. Belonging is kind of like where everybody knows your name. Some of you remember an old sitcom that had that name. That's like that, like Cheers was the way church should be, where, where you feel welcome and everybody knows your name. To belong first, to be part of this community. That if you're wondering what this is all about, what is this, what is this Jesus thing about? Um, if you're not you're still trying to figure out, you know, I was taught these things to believe as a child and, and I've had different life experiences and I'm not quite sure what I believe now where it's always forming. You know, it's like I've always believed, I've always trusted the Lord, but then I've learned, I've learned more and I believe a little bit differently than I did before. So if you're in a journey, you're in a process, you're trying to figure out what you believe. And we don't worry so much about behaving. I mean, behaving is much more it has to do much more with the exploring. But the bottom line of that is, is belong. So if you're curious, if you're seeking, if you're wondering what this is about, if you want to be someplace where people get to know your name, together to consider God, creator of heaven and earth, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, the one who has set all the stars in the sky, who, who created and maintains and provides for every living thing. That God, that God, that God who came in the flesh to live among us, to die on the cross, to take on our suffering, to take on the shame and the guilt and join us in all the darkness and the difficulty of life. That God, the one who rose again the one who, it's resurrection power, the power of creation, the power to overcome everything. That God, that God knows your name. And you belong to that God. And you belong here. You're in the right place. Because that's the God we know and love and we seek and we, we long for and we teach that God that enables us, hopefully, in Christ's name, to welcome one another without judgment, without forcing behaviors, but with unconditional love, bearing one another's burdens, rejoicing in one another's joys. So, first, Jesus called his disciples and they journeyed with him to learn how to live in the kingdom of God. And they still didn't get it. I mean, you know, they ran away. They ran and hid. They came to the tomb. You would think that after being with Jesus for three years and all the hints that he dropped and all the things that he taught and everything else, they came to the tomb and they were surprised. Like, wait, didn't you, you get the whole idea about me going to the cross and me being dying and coming back in three days? And, you know, that was pretty explicit, I thought. But Jesus is patient with us and calls us together in community to belong. And then everything else will follow. So we thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, for adopting us as your children for not insisting that we believe a certain way or have all of our ducks in a row or that we're behaving properly, but instead you call us into this holy family together, again, to be your sons and daughters, to love us unconditionally, and to teach us to unconditionally love one another. So we thank you and we praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.